welcome down to Lower Method Field. We have a beautiful matchup for you today. We have 0-1 one, oh one UCF Golden Knights taking on our 3-2 two and, three and two Wolfpack team. I am Sam Harding. Alongside me to my left is Nathan White Ingram. Nathan, how are you feeling today? Um, rather smashing, apart from this weather, though. It is a bit cold. The rain has been on and off, spitting. Kind of dangerous, you know, making the field a little bit slippy. For one, my toes are cold. My hands are cold. I've got gloves on. Hopefully, we'll stay warm inside our tent. Not sure how the weather is going to affect the game, though. And to my right is Trevor Seaman. Trevor, playing at you played at Apex High School. You played MIDI. What is this weather going to do for you as a player? As a player, this weather it's just going to make your hands cold. It's going to make the ground cold and hard. It's going to affect the checking and how the ball runs and bounces. So it's going to make it interesting. Absolutely. We saw some of the UCF players. They have little surgical gloves under their hands to m put their gloves over to make sure that they're warm. And we talked about the ball bouncing. We have two goalies coming in. We have Christopher Cacciatore for UCF and Christopher Tong. And we have Tong starting his second game, his first at home. And Nathan, what's that going to do for the young goalie's mental? I think it'll be a confidence boost for him. Um, you know, second game, it's going to be tough. This team, not sure how they're going to perform. This weather condition is a little bit different, especially for a goalkeeper. Um, hopefully he'll have the most confidence he can, you know, play as best he can, the best he can, and his team will be behind him for sure. Absolutely, and we have UCF coming from Liberty University, and they had a tough loss. Now, how do they want to bounce back here, Trevor? Um, after a loss, you just want to come out and play hard. You want to... Uh, come out and be the aggressor, and you don't want to let the other team gub get up on you so and try to be coming back again. Absolutely, and <coughs> NC State, they're coming off a road trip last weekend. They had three games in two days. Now, how did that road trip go for them, Nathan? Well, they came back with a couple injuries, and of course, you know, whenever a teammate is injured, that's not going to be a positive outcome. So we'll wanna, I would like to see how those injuries will affect the whole team chemistry and um, perhaps moving forward as well. Yeah, we got some new players coming in. We had Andrew Matherly, number 11, go down with a grade two hamstring. And in the last home game against against Wake Forest, we had Kyle Baker, number two, get taken out at the last play of the game with a grade two concussion. So we have some injuries. And Trevor, you've played through some injuries. What's that like not knowing that you're at 100% and not wanting to re-aggravate that injury? Um, I mean, the most important thing is to definitely come back and try to get back. Don't come back early and try to come back 100%. And then, so that you just kind of trust in yourself and trust in your abilities at that point. Absolutely. And you hear the whistles going. That means game is about to start. We're about two minutes out. We'll come back for first face off in a few. Welcome down to Lower Method Field. I am Sam Harding alongside Nathan White Ingram and Trevor Seaman, and we have a great game for you. We have the clocks just at zeros. We have both teams. It looks like UCF is checking in. We have UCF in the gold chrome helmets. Those are those are a beauty. Those are kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. With those are nice. It reminds me of Notre Dame. With the gold, with the gold trim on black, black tops and white bottoms. With NC State, and they're all they're white tops, white helmets, and their black bottoms. We got players switching out nets. We have people running around right now. We've got the coaches meeting with the referees doing the last second changes. And player, uh, guys, as players here, what do you want to do? Just get out there and get warm, to get warm. Um, yeah, for sure, especially with these temperatures at the moment. and. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm wearing gloves. I should have double socks, I think. My toes are now cold. Um, we're going to be sitting still for most of the game. These players will be running around, but not all of them. Let's talk about the goalkeepers. The goalkeepers, they're going to be standing still. You know, we're making some saves, hopefully, uh, either side. But they're not going to be running around as much as the rest of the players. So how much will this cold impact then? Do you want to take that one, Trevor? Um, I mean, as the players play, and they'll warm up as they get going. Um, it's... With goalies, you kind as you're sitting in net. I mean, hopefully there's a lot of action both sides. That'd be interesting for us. Yeah. Also, <laughs> otherwise it won't be interesting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but when it's on the other side, jump around, see what you can. I was talking to number seven, Chris Tong, the goalie for this NC State team, 
And he was, I asked him if he always wore sweats or just when it was this cold, and he looked at me and laughed and just said, only when it's this cold. And that's how I played in lacrosse when I was goalie. I could never play in sweats in a game. I was always told that I never should in the first place. And that, <laughs> and that, but if it was cold enough, I'd always put on leggings. But I, it would hurt my mobility. So that might, might be a thing that you could see. With I think personally, I'd choose, I'd choose uh, sweats Which over leggings. Really? Just for the, uh, the look, I think. The look. Uh, I, I like yeah. the leggings with the shorts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think. I think a lot of players are wearing them nowadays for yeah. the style. A and bit. also, I think the the leggings allow some compression. Would you say That's to your legs? Sure. Yeah, for sure. I know a lot of soccer players do do that for, for the sure. compression in the calves when you're running around. You see that in a lot of sports nowadays mm. with basketball, lacrosse, football. I all think that. I'm just more of a lazy person. I go for the sweats, <laughs> the comfort. Yeah, and then <laughs> sweats. They also didn't hurt as much. I think so that you, was nice. Well, you say the sweats would stop the wind flows more as well. So if it does get a little bit windy, the wind chill can be stopped by your sweatpants. I know. I know goalies. They played with sweats on, and they they wore them because of when they're going down to their knees. They just mm. wear them to protect yeah. their knees. They would have protection. <coughs> I wish I would have done that. I never thought about <laughs> that. I'd come out of games, my knees. Yeah, especially look, on turf. Look like strawberries. Yeah, on turf, I'd come up with the scars. And those, those are battle scars right there. Those I are memories. People, I remember that save. That one hurt. <laughs> <laughs> And we got the goalies looking to touch it up, getting talked to by the refs right now as we turn our attention back to the field. We have number 33, Henshaw, who's become the captain of that D line. It looks like William McOwen for NC State will take that face as you bump up. Is that and a flag? A flag looked like it was already thrown. I don't know if that was on purpose or as a little joke. It was Golden Knights! Not going to happen. We had the Golden Knights looking to take, off, take the face off, and that is. Number 44, I believe, Jake Alentario. I can't. That is 44? Or for us, for, for State, we have 34. We have 34 for State, William McGowan going against, I believe that was number 41, Spencer Pardo. And NC State's coming away with the face. That is a big part of NC State's improvement there. NC State has been rough on the face-offs this season and winning that first face really sets confidence for this team. For sure, it's essential to have that possession. And here you go, looking for a touch. Number 24, Sean Tobin. Tobin, with, Tobin is a very quick player running around. We've got Hank Moss in the hoodie combo r running around X. I definitely think the hoodie was a good decision. Have you, did you ever play with the hoodie on? Uh, Personally, I didn't, but I know a lot of players that did. I remember when it would be really cold trying to put the hoodie on under the helmet. That was always a fun task. <laughs> Ball's up with Tobin now. They're almost teasing the defenders here, moving the ball around. Sounds like they, w it looks like they just wanted to get them moving around, get a feel mm -hmm. for it. Oh. That was number 21. Oh, that's a goal. That was Christopher Schultz on the goal. Fantastic effort. That was a really good drive down the alley and nice bounce shot. That was beautiful. It's 1 0 now for the Wolfpack. And that's early on as well. Only a couple minutes gone. Only 13 46 now on the clock. And what did you see on that play? You talked about him running down the alley. What does that do as a midi just scraping across? How do you want to shoot that yeah, shot? Yeah, I mean, early on they were working it around. Um, trying to, you guys mentioned that. They, uh, they're just trying to. Work it around, see the opening, see what the defense has given them. It's early in the game. Um, and then we saw Christopher Schultz, I believe, take that one down the alley, like I said. And uh, place on those ones, you want to aim for the opposite post. So, for instance, on that one, he came down the right and shot it towards the left post, and it worked out for him. Absolutely. You want to make sure that because the goalie is going with you, you want to pull it across his body. And NC State on another fast break. That's number that's 12. That's the back of the net again. Evan Super Ryer. Up. Once again on the right side, going for that left post. Absolutely. That was coming off a faceoff. NC State wasted no time scoring their second goal of the game. 13-25 left on the clock. Yeah, I think they found a weak spot for the goalkeeper for sure already. Um, not necessarily that's going to happen every time, but that's twice now. Almost the exact same shot. You'd think the goalkeeper would have you know, been able to fix that mistake, especially from the first goal happening. That's uh -huh. two really early and really quickly. I think that was within the first within the first minute after the first goal was scored. Absolutely. It came about 20 seconds after. And that's that yeah. stick side low shot on on number 13, I believe he was wearing. 
That is, that catch, is that catchatory? That is catchatory for this for this or this UCF team. Apologize. And UCF just could not get the clear to go, and the ball is going to go for this Wolfpack team. As a chance to get UCF some momentum, stopping NC State from scoring, but now it's going to go back the other way. Beautiful check there by the attackman. I think that was Hinshaw that lost it. Now it's going to go back to to the Golden Knights. They're just you hear the yellow call, just saying slow it down, slow it down, trying to get the players in who you want. Ball's now being. Yeah, they want to be able to top. control the ball a bit more, and control the speed of the game, especially down two nothing so quickly. There we go. You got number 21, John Brady, looking for something. He's getting double down near X. Ball's now up with 32. Marco Montero. That ball's being moved around. Goalie's top left. Fakes the pass now. Looks to move it up to number 14, Ian Lucas. Lucas on the drive. Has the hot side come. Dumped down to the bottom right of the goalie. Ooh. And that was number 21, John Brady. With Poor effort, I thought. <laughs> That's a tough shot to make from that angle. Yeah, I think maybe a pass would have been a better decision. Absolutely. And we already can see that the weather conditions have affected the match so far. There was a slippage by the goal uh, about 30 seconds ago that obviously is to do with the weather. I think maybe the water on the field is causing the, the players to lose their footing. There was no contact. And he just went down. And now ball has been moved up. Ball's up at 21. John Brady. That's moved to the goalie's bottom right. Back up. I like how NC State's getting out on the defense or the offensive players' hands. They are very yeah, keeping tight to them. It's well done. Attempt on goal, and that's in as well. That was a beautiful shot there by Tyler Gaffney, making it 2-1, going five hole. It looked like right through Christopher Tong's legs. And that was a beautiful shot there by Gaffney. And what do you see on that play there, Tyler? That was a bit of a um, just a breakdown on defensive communication there, I think, on NC State's part. I was going to give credit to the UCF team there. The ball was being moved around very nicely, you know, controlling the play, putting it to their own strengths, and a good finish, too. Absolutely. They were really testing that defense, making them move, yeah. seeing what they yeah. had. Trying and at NC State, for the most part, they, like Tyler said, they were really aggressive out there on the hands, and then it just broke down. And and pace off again. Okay. But UCF have, have sort of struggling to gain possession there. Yeah, that was Dos Santos on the uh, face for UCF. Lots ball. of checks there. Ball's on the ground. Yard oh, sit down. Now ball's being moved around. That's big possession by UCF. Ball's being moved up. There's the slippage. The slip. There's a slippage. You hear the bench going the wild. See if they can take advantage of it. They need you to. hear yellows calling. There's number 21 just gonna. It's John Brady again. He's just gonna hang it out. Now he just rolls it over to number 32, Montero. Now balls up with number five, I Zachary think Ott. That was big that UCF got that possession and I'm trying sure. to change a momentum here in this Confidence game. Confidence booster, I think, as well. For sure, it really is. Going down 2-0 in the first two minutes. It's not what you want, but. Now they're fighting back. We're, we're not even five minutes done. We still have 10.50 on the clock, and UCF looking to looking to tie this game up. And if they do, you s they'll be able to move forward in more of an offensive manner instead of worrying too much um, about being behind. Absolutely, bring the game back to even as John Brady now takes it. He's Good being strength. attacked by Ballsborough. Ball's up and we're got whistle blown. We're going to have violation. him inside the crease. Yeah, that's a crease violation. Quick whistle. Ball's going to be brought up by Ballsboro. It just takes takes a hack, but he keeps running. He's he still goes, going. Looking for somewhere to go. He's just going to bring it out. Looks for a midi. Gets it to number six, Harrison Ryder. Ryder now moves it around. Ryder runs off, goes to the box. We've got players coming out. NC State went with the yellow call. Now we got number nine, Andrew Davis with the ball. And now NC State, they want to get that lead going. They want to make sure that they give their defense a rest and they start to attack again. And here they come down the alley. Good little move. Ball's Schultz now over have with a Schultz. Attempt, good pass out wide. 
Start with Evan Ryer. Name that I haven't said a lot is number 26, Jake Walls. He's fighting on the crease, and that was number nine. It's a good cut. Andrew Davis has a beautiful cut, like you just mentioned. It's definitely a good idea to go for goal at that point. And here we go. Jake Walls moves it up. And Jake Walls, he's been very quiet so far, only six minutes gone, but he will make his name known soon. He used to play LSM for this pack team last year, and then he moved to attack because they, they lost so many players, and he's made his – he leads the team in points. Oh, and there he is on the doorstep. That's the back Walls, of the net. Wall stays out of the crease, gets one right on the doorstep. As I was talking about him, he heard it. He needed to get on the board. And what did you see on that from the passer stand? That was a very, a really good job by um, number nine, Andrew Davis there, working his defender low and then turning back and finding Jake Walls there on the crease for a nice, just a nice. Just clinical finish. Easy finish. Yeah. Yeah. Very clinical. He had the fancy footwork to not go in the crease. You don't don't want to yeah, turn like it to over that the, close. You like to see that um, players having that um, awareness of the field in their positioning. Yeah. Absolutely. Here we go, McOwen. Ball is up. High ball. Tries to do a one-hand one scoop. You're going to get yelled at by the coach on that one. Here you go, McOwen. Ball still on the ground. Scrapping for the ball. There you go, number 22 scoops it up, and he's got a little lane. He's going down the left alley, our left alley, goalie's right. I completely agree with what you said earlier, Nathan. I need some more socks. <laughs> it is getting very, very chilly out here. Absolutely. The energy uh, on and the fit. And oh, we're in pants as well. Most of these players only have shorts on and, l and low socks. Absolutely. I can imagine how their legs feel. A beautiful check, ball still on the ground. Talking about us being cold, the feeling on the field is ab absolutely electric as they're coming down. Yeah. Got some hot the, action going. The bench, too. Both benches are very hype, and, I, and I'm loving the atmosphere. It is a very good atmosphere. We do have a good amount of fans out here for what is a dreary day. And in, NC State Lacrosse always brings fans out. And here you go. Long stick. Looking for someone. He's just getting harassed by number two. Ball's on the ground. Ball's now moved up. Going on a three-on-three -three fast break. Probably just gonna slow it down here for for the Golden Knights. We probably would have liked to see the LSM for State move it on to the attackman on that play. Yeah, you want to move that out quicker. Here we go, number 24, Adam Hale just scoops it on over to 27 for the Golden Knights. Looked for a skip, wasn't there. That ball's up with 22, Tyler Gaffney. Gaffney with the goal for the. Golden Knights so far. State trying to keep them out. Trying Next to shoot. One. Hale goes for it. Hale found the spot down low. He's just tiptoeing. He's tearing up some <laughs> some grass down there too, and the, playing in the mud. Didn't get the shot he wanted, but Golden Knights get the chase. Now it's back with Hale. Hill with a quick dodge. Didn't look like he was trying anything by it. We're gonna have a whistle. Timeout for the Golden Knights. And as they go to the benches, what did you two see so far out of the first eight minutes of this game? We'll start with I, Nathan. I would, I would actually say that even though State are winning, I would think that UCF seems to be dominating more with possession. They're controlling the ball more around. The, they're only attacking third. Um, State are having problems with keeping them out there and they're passing the ball UCF they're passing the ball around very nicely shooting wise not as effective as State State have been clinical almost all of their shots have gone in would you say UCF a few more misses but I think if they keep at it they will probably put some more away because right now to me they're looking more promising absolutely and then Trevor on the flip side NC State they've been playing very aggressive T two quick goals not even not really playing with their six on six offense and then that other goal what have you seen so far out of state um yeah i agree with what nathan was saying about the uh about <laughs> ucf appearing to be playing a little bit better in this game appearing to um i went just dominating a little bit the ball possession but nc state it was huge for them to get out to those two early goals and build some confidence off of that almost yeah. like a bit, 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 uh, bit of insurance for yeah. sure They've got, sure. they've got two insurance goals right now, and NC State 
is their winning faceoffs, which is been a was a key factor in their season last year. They were they weren't playing they weren't great on faceoffs last year, and they've struggled this season. And then it looks like they're starting to find a groove, which is something I want to see them improve on this this game and give some confidence to McOwen as he comes in and got the players coming back down. Look for a. I, I'm expecting UCF to just go. They're going to move it around a little bit. You have the play called in the huddle where probably say move it around twice and then we'll start our play. Don't you think there, yeah. Trevor? Yeah, I think they're going to, you'll see them work it around the outside here like they are, um, like you touched on. Maybe get some cuts, some a couple quick dodges, but they're going to try to get NC State running around and out of, out of balance. Again, again, my point is being proven countless times now. They've got more control, but then they go to shoot, and they're just not as accurate. That looks like a. It looked like he was going to shoot, but I think I he think so. passed it out the last second. Even so, but in the same position, but it was still an yeah. inaccurate pass. Yeah. I agree with what you're saying. I think you'll see uh, some of those goals, those shots start going in later in the game, Nate. If they, uh, NC State doesn't yeah, stop so UCF yeah. from shooting so much. They don't pressure a little bit higher and tighter and they're going to get scored on. And there's a failure advanced by the Wolfpack. Tong went up to about the circle, found a man who was number 24, Sean Tobin, but they weren't able to get a touch in. So that's going to go back to the Golden Knights as they find someone that's number five. Ott. Look at that pace. Ott. Trying to speed Ott. by and lots of skill there. That's where Good someone footwork. slipped earlier. Yeah. Now here we go, number 22, Gaffney. Gaffney again has the one goal for the Golden Knights. He's looking to get back on the board. Experienced player too, he's a senior. There you go, Gaffney. Good fire there, great help by the defenseman. Now it looks like it's gonna, Good play. It's gonna be a, a three on four. I think fast he might break. take this by himself maybe. Passes that was it. Benedict. Ooh. That was a great pass to Moss. Moss was playing at the top of the top of the fast break triangle, which you never see, which is very rare for Moss. I think he is in the wrong spot there. And here we go, being brought around. Moss normally plays on the crease on that fast break. That was a great, that was a great play there by Benedict. Yeah, it's the right pass to make for sure. That ball is going back to Jake Alentario. Now balls up at number 40, Grant Kettering. Kettering on on the drive, looks for the skip, ball's being moved around. Oh. Tried to get a little fancy with it was Corey Shillow. And you gotta think, you just wanna finish. I don't think Tong was really ready for, for one, whether it be just a simple shot or a behind the back, I don't think Tong was ready for that pass on, Ooh, on crease. Spilled that. And that was a great, Great save there good by save, UCF goalie and a great clear. Very good clear. Ball's going up number five. Zachary Ott, Ott's looking for something. I think he's just gonna get the touch then slow it down. And that was two good plays for UCF. And here you go. They're still gonna slow it down. What'd you see on that save? As I look back, <laughs> we have uh, Cacciatore still practicing. He's making sure he's got those low shots covered. What do you guys see on that on oh. that last play as we have more action going right now? It's prior on it. Some sloppy offense being played right now, not gonna lie. Yeah. From both teams, let's be honest. That's a little sloppy. having a problem with, with you know, keeping possession at the top there and and UCF not being as accurate as they should be. Yeah, we're seeing some drop catches and yeah. some just easy fundamental Something you don't teammate. expect to see at this level. Absolutely, and here we go, Parker Sand. Stan, uh, Sadden, he last year was the starting goalkeeper for this Packlax team. He made the shift over from goalie to to midi this season. He's not gotten a lot of play on the offensive midi side, but he'll he'll fill in where needed, and he's back on the defensive side as they start this clear. Here the over calls. That's a it was dangerous. Pass. It was risky for sure. It was also inaccurate. Hasn't quite big paid hit. off. Big hit, yep. But now they have the ball. UCF moving forward quickly. Looked 
Good Tries pass. to dig it down low. Great slide there by 82. Needs to get a shot off. Ball is now on the ground. It's going Wolfpack way. And that was a great slide there by Ballsboro. You, it was not his slide to make, but it is the coma slide. He got there in time and really oh. put in. There's our yeah. first flag of the of the day. It was a it looked like Push a cross in check in the back, like, yeah. Yeah, a little bit dirty. The referee launched this flag as far as he could, quite far away from I think the, the wind took it too. I'm not sure. It looked like he was, you know, trying to put a bit of shot put there. <laughs> <laughs> and this is going to be the first penalty of the game. It's going to be NC State going man up with 2.53 left in the first. And Trevor, were you in on this man up unit? What did you, if so, what did you do as a member I'd of Man At up. times I was in that man up, but um, you know you got man up. You have your your best offensive players, your best shooters, and you wanna you wanna get any gap that you can for those shooters to let them let them rip. Absolutely. And on the defensive side, you you have your four best right defensive play shot. holes. Oh, there's a moving pick, and also what I want to point out is. A little of a, just there's a big duck there by Drew Bauer, which is a tough spot for a goalie because he can't really see it. He's expecting a player just to take a bullet for him. Yeah. Drew Bauer really ducked there. I think uh, Ketchatory might talk to him after the game, see where his alle uh, allegiance, allegiance lies. Yeah, especially since the shot was sort of high up in the air. You and, know. Um, you know, that's going to hurt if you hit anyone in the yeah, chest yeah. there, I would imagine. But. Yeah. Goalkeeper does need his players to be in front of the ball there, stopping the shot so he kinda doesn't have to do as much work. Kind of like hockey. They yeah. they go out of their way to slide into it. The they cross players they sometimes enjoy get that. out of the way. Yeah. They're not wearing as much padding in lacrosse, though. That so. is true. I'd always get mad at my players when they'd get out of the way. I'd get really agitated. Oh, late slide there by number seven. They still shot. There was a late slide by number seven. They didn't call anything, and that was a great shot, as you pointed out. Just Good a save better too. save by Cacciatore. Yeah. Cacciatore is finding his groove now, getting two saves in a row under his belt. Ball, ball is now being brought up. Schultz or Ryer tried for a, just a wild check, didn't get anything. Got 120 left. Feeds the crease. Oh. There's Fantastic nothing. Fantastic little bit of movement there. There's nothing Tonka could have done there. That was number 33. No. Very quickly, quickly made there as well. Like the, the good pass and a quick turn of the footwork, and then after you know, move your stick around to have a shot on goal. Yep. Superb. That was Shillo there. He missed earlier with the behind the back. I think he heard us up here <laughs> criticizing him, and he put one in the back of the net with just a simple shot. Yeah, he stuck to the fundamentals on that one. I mean, he could have definitely done something funky, like put it between his legs or, you know, some backward shot, but keeping it simple, that's the way you want to go. He had uh, some time for, for a circus shot. <laughs> he did. <laughs> that was a beautiful pass. I don't know how he got so open on the crease, but... That was a great find by the midi. That was a beautiful... Beautiful find. Tong really had no chance there. And you go know, face off again, 3 2 in favor of the pack. McGowan fighting with number 15 of the Knights, and it looks like it's going to go Knights' way off the scoop. Now it's a release. Walls, Walls is picking it up. Walls with a beautiful swim move to get away from that. Walls trying to get his hands free, dumps it down to Moss. Moss can't pick it up. We're going to have a flag. It's going to go back to the wolf pack. Did you see his, his ability to get past the two defenders there and still get the pass off? I was quite impressed by that. That was beautiful. That was yeah, that Jake was a Walls. <laughs> a great display of athleticism there yeah. by Walls. Yeah, fending them off as well, just his, his shoulder. Absolutely. And that was a beautiful little play by Cacciatore. He knew if he scooped it up, it was just going to go back to NC State. So he just Pushed slapped it, it out of bounds. It. They're getting it regardless. Yeah. <laughs> No need to put any more effort to it. That's what I would have done. That's a good move. <laughs> and his arms getting checked as a goalie too. In yeah, this cold weather, that hurts a lot more. With no elbow that. pads, that that hurts. And here we go. We got NC State bringing out their best <laughs> best players again. That the last man up it resulted in a in a high shot by the state team, and they're looking they're looking to put some put some numbers up with this man up unit. Ball's being moved around, 30 seconds left. Oh. Behind the back pass, you gotta think, he did not want to do that one. That was not a great pass. Ball's gone long sure forward. I'm not sure what he's looking for on that one. Really moving now. 
Ball's now down, bottom out to the goalie. Got trailer coming, got 10 seconds left. Good footwork. Ball's up with, ball's on the oh, ground now. Right. We want NC State to pick this up and then they won't have to do a face. Now it's gonna be an uneven face. Almost, almost NC State had the opportunity to pick that up and get that uneven face going, but now it's gonna be 3-2 going into the end of the first quarter. And Nathan, what have you seen so far this game? A lot of back and forth. I don't think, uh, you know, at the beginning I thought that UCF had more control, State obviously with more goals, but now I'm kind of thinking that a bit more even, a bit more evenly matched. No one really has firm control over the game. And Trevor, what about you? What did you see out of both of these teams? Yeah, um, I agree with what Nathan was saying. It was a lot back and forth early. Both teams got out to a hot start with, and then we saw three early goals within two minutes, I believe. Um, and uh, it, we saw some sloppy play at the end of the quarter here, just some drop passes, some missed opportunities by both teams. And uh, most importantly, at the end of the quarter there with UCF, they could have had a goal there, maybe tied up. We've had goalies not getting, well, there haven't been too many shots. Most of them have hit the back of the net, but I think Kachitori, or Kachitori has the most saves right now with two. He had, there's two, or three saves. He had three in a row so far after letting those first first two in that lower six side. And I don't think Tong has gotten a single one yet, There, ha but there haven't been as many shots on goal as Nathan has been no, saying. I think to be honest, the, has been the shots they inaccurate. had on goal went in. That yeah, way. they've had two, sh three shots on goal, two went in the back of the net, one was the behind the back that hit the post, and Tong really needs to get his momentum going, and his defense has really helped him out, though. They've been very quick on slides, minus that one play where they left a man right on the doorstep. They've been very good on slides so far. As we mentioned at the beginning of the game as well, Sam, goalkeeper <laughs> sitting there when the ball's down the other end of the, the field, it gets cold, and we did notice um, the UCF goalkeeper being on his toes a little bit, practicing his, the low shot saves, and I think that's important as well. Maybe Tone could try that. Yeah, absolutely. Just make sure to go through the motions. Just no one's down there. Usually everyone's up near the half field, and so you're alone anyway. You have no one to talk to. So <laughs> just I feel like that was a bit of a, a personal experience there. Usually, usually. <laughs> I'd always find someone to talk to. The slower guys were normally my friends because they'd all <laughs> stay back near crease. And Mick Owen with the, with the win, try to get it out quick. There's ball. Benedict with the ground ball. Good. Good trail check, right on the cuff of the hand. And Ball's now with Walls. Walls has speed. He's guarded by a big defender there. And that's the matchup you might want to exploit. Walls on a short stick, and no longer is it. Ball's with Staden. Staden with the pass to Walls. Walls has the defensive men on him. Good screen, both men go down. Walls moves it over. Number, good shot. That was number 16. Good Alex Service, well. getting, getting hit there. That's a big hit as he took that shot. For sure, I think I think he saw that hit coming and he kind of took a little bit off that shot and braced himself for it. It did look like that. It looked like a pretty easy save for number 13 in goal. And now balls now balls with UCF as they. Moving around, you hear the yellow calls. As that's going to be John Brady, in the back of the, in the back there, just hanging out. Pass, passes up. We got now we're at even strength here. Everyone's coming in. We're in an open set. No, they're sliding adjacent. No longer as people move in. And good switch there by NC State as they move around. They got the two sides going. Strong shot there by number 14, Ian Lucas, but goes wide. Another inaccurate shot, but UCF but again, the movement comes up with UCF it. UCF is good. The movement, they're playing the ball around well. I think the state are just kind of waiting for them to have a shot maybe. I don't think there's a not, not that much pressure from state. And there's well, a slippage. A mistake from him there. Exactly. Sorry, adapting that term from you there, Nathan. <laughs> slippage is one of my favorite words already. Oh, J.D. Brady 
trying to find his way in. And Flag, it looks like, on the field. And what are they calling here? I think they're going to be man up for UCF for a minute. I think, I think that was had a push in the back, maybe. I think it was. They were trying to push him into the into the crease and get in violation, but Brady has a big frame. Tough to push him without cheating there. And no, where are we going with the ball? Is it going to be NC State? Yeah. Oh, it is NC well, State. Like maybe yeah. We Brady lied. For being in the crease. Well, maybe. The, the we, we lied. It was more of you lied, Sam. I don't think we took part in the line. Absolutely not. I would never <laughs> lie to my viewers. So it's definitely you two <laughs> feeding me information. <laughs> and NC I'll State goes blade. man up. <laughs> it does look like Brady's got a uh, penalty for the crease violation there. And here we go, NC State man up for the third time. Still no goals for this man up unit. Looking around, they're just going quick, making the, making the move quick, make, making their attacks early. Ball's over with Moss. Moss moves it up. That's Ivy. I think I got a shot off though. She's moving her around. You're doing really good. Ball's up with Ivy. Ivy steps into it. Oh, that's the back of the net. Beautiful shot there. Bounces it low. Great technique. Catch Tori was tracking it low. He did exactly what he needed to do, but it was a high bounce right to the top. I think it kissed, kissed a little pipe there at the top. That was a beautiful goal there by Ivy. So difficult to save as well, especially with these weather conditions and the way the bounce is so unpredictable. You don't know whether it's going to bounce high, low, or just stop there on the ground and roll, depending on how wet the ground is. Superb effort, though, from the goalkeeper. Unfortunate for him. Can't do much about that. It's a great shot and a great yeah, goal. I think we see the cold coming into effect with the hard bounce off the ground mm. there and allowed for it to trick the goalie going low but bounce right up over his shoulder. I was with Cacciatore. I was tracking it low the whole time. I was not expecting that high of a bounce with this wet surface. But like you said, Trevor, the cold really yeah. affected that bounce. I was especially the, the grass as well is not really? very long, as, so perhaps you know being so short, the bounces bounce up. Yeah. But I haven't seen the ball bounce like that at all until then. Yeah. So no, and it feels a bit different. Maybe here we go. Action getting near us. Benedict just getting checked. Beautiful move there by number five. The trail coming. And moving around, number 32, great check there by Hinshaw. Haven't got to call Hinshaw's name a lot today. That ball's bro, looking for somewhere to go. He's just going to run. He's going to tiptoe that line. Here he goes. He's got a free pass. Moves it up. I believe that is Pryor with it. Pryor's going. We got a man back. Pryor's just going to look for a midi. Pryor bounce Good pass style. to Moss. Good body there by Moss. As if you could see there, dirt fell off the back of the net by Moss. That means the ball was caked in some mud, which is affecting the movement of it. Now it's all white and pristine again. And here we go. Got number 21, Schultz, with a goal on the day already for Schultz. Moving around, it's 4-2. Wolfpack with 11 minutes left in the second half. Schultz going around. Oh, beautiful hit. This. This UCF team is playing very aggressive. They're UCF making is. them know. I don't think they want any more goals scored on that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> if you're going to cut crease, you're going you're gonna to pay. As we have Catch Tory going low and Schultz backing that up, or Ryer backing that up. But that's got to be nice as a goalie knowing that if they're going to get a shot off, they're going to pay for that shot. Yeah, it definitely helps you uh, reinforce that uh, your defense is there for you. It's kind of like the Pistons bad boy, no easy shots. You gotta make sure you feel it in the morning. Both, every shot it looks like has been, there's another check there by number Ooh. 20. Looked a little high. Some of these have been a little late too, so UCF has gotta be careful not getting another penalty. Especially with the way NC State is starting to click on their man ups and got whistle, whistle, whistle. It has taken a while for them to click for sure, because of course they've had what, three now? The three man four, up situations, four. four man up situations. With so one resulting with in the one goal. one result in the goal obviously, so. Now they may be looking for a bit more momentum and they're going to score more of those chances. Well, we got a whistle. I have no clue what's going on. The referee's talking to the coach, it seems. Uh, all the other way around. We have Coach Cam Wood and Coach Demarest talking there. We got Tet. Oh, 
Uh, it was a shot clock. It was talk about the shot clock, figuring out how much time. It was 10 off the restart. So State has got to get a shot off here. Either hit goalie, hit cage, and there we go. Shot clock resets. And beautiful play. Flag. And they're going to call a flag. Oh. I That's Referee setting that one sky high. Impartially, I don't agree with that. The refs are having fun tossing their laundry today. They are. <laughs> I think he was trying to get that one out of space. That looked, the goalie slipped a little bit. It might have called for maybe of a high hit. Goalie came out of crease, though, so he is legal to hit. Yeah. I thought that was fine. Coming from a goalie, too, I would love. I always loved coming out of cage because if you come out of cage, it's kind of like a quarterback. You have a big target on your back, but people are so aggressive to you that they're going to start swinging and cross checks and slashes are going to come up. And you and enjoyed this, Sam? I did because I'm a team <laughs> player. <laughs> you like getting hit, right? I like it. But I know as we learn something new every day. We really enjoyed when you guys came out of there. Yeah, the amount of times that I just get hit, and then I look over and I see the closest ref just throw something throw something as I hit the tent replicating a referee and what we haven't got to talk about is now we're going to have UCF on I believe their second man up of the game and oh great save there by Tong Tong now finally gets a save too. he's getting some momentum over, oh. under his belt he's going to get attacked you got to get out of that oh. quick he was right in front of the goal look at Tong with the quick moves oh he's dropping the ball though drops oh, out boy. he's playing up top oh dear you gotta move that quicker if you're tong. That's. You I know. think that's just poor decision making. You yeah. know. I, You'd like to see him take it behind the net and kind of use the crease as a pick and some protection for himself. Yeah. Move yeah. it onto somebody. We thought. We thought that he was gonna get out of there though with all that movement. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Once he got away for a second, he could have moved it on. Mm -hmm. But what? As a result. What really plays a part of that too is the weather conditions. The his stick is a little is a little damp now and. Just the way that he's running, it's going to fall right out the back. That's happened to me before yeah, as he, well. He Would maybe a better decision for him to just throw the ball long. Yes. Right. Completely. Yeah. Just, just doesn't even look for a pass. A just, just launch yeah. it as far as you can. Yeah, I think maybe if he would made that decision, he would have been better off then. So going off what you said, Nathan, that is a great point. You have four seconds in the crease before you had to get out. So for me, if I was man down and I make that save, I'm either going out the back or if I can't go out the back, you count in your head. One, two, three, no one's open. Chuck it to the farthest corner yeah. that you can. And just, if they get it back, at least some time is killed. Yeah, the ball's not near your goal anymore. And you're not Abs worrying about dropping the ball and getting scored on. So. Absolutely, that was a great point. Look at this insight from Pac TV. And here we go. We got number six, <laughs> moves it around. And timeout by NC State. And it looks like some more momentum is going back to UCF. They're down one, but. Getting a goal like that where the bounces start to go your way, where you think the goal they make the save on that man up and you think NC State's about to bring it back to your side and it just drops out the back goalies back and you get an open net. The momentum is now moving for the Golden Knights. Yeah, you love those easy goals and you love to – the whole team builds off of those no matter how easy they – despite how easy it was. And then NC State defensively, Nathan, the way they got to do just – to make sure that plays like that doesn't happen on a clear like that. Well, I would say maybe if the goalkeeper's having trouble with getting the ball out, maybe have a defender stay further back, closer to help, maybe a shorter pass, instead of having to struggle to find someone long accurately. Um, and maybe they'll maybe that make that adjustment to next time. Just so have a bit of insurance to make sure that the goalkeeper's not going to be troubled too much. And that's got to be rough for Tong, finally getting a save on the day. Getting that momentum for himself, and then yeah, right after yeah. that, just dropping it Especially out. Especially right since he goal. did make such a good save, you thought maybe something positive would come out of it, and obviously the opposite. Yeah, that's a rough one for Tong. Tong sees walking back, looking at his stick. Can't blame him. I'd blame it on the stick as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the stick. It's always the stick. Yeah, something's wrong with my stick. It's yeah. like if you've ever watched tennis players, and they hit a bad shot, they look down at their look racket. Look at the racket as if yeah. the racket's fault. Like, oh, you silly thing. Yes. And then they break it, and then they break the racket, you know? <laughs> Poor lacrosse players can't break their sticks because those things are expensive. They are. And they haven't got spares, I'm sure. And then they're like little shanks out on the field. They're very yeah. dangerous <laughs> if you break them. The amount I'd of imagine, yeah, sharp. You'll see yeah. some guys with a uh, backup every now yeah. and then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
but there's a reason uh, it's the backup. You don't want to play with that absolutely. game action. Absolutely, there's a difference with the lacrosse play and your stick. It's uh, it's uh, yeah, um, 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 it's kind of an emotional connection. It's half of your body at that point, well, right? For sure, Especially it's an extension sport. of your arm. In yeah. A way. Mm -hmm. Jake Walls. We had a nice little slide there by Reef Ivy coming Good in the screen. as well. And Hank Moss with the hoodie going around. Ball's now up. It's NC State. Six on six. Tries to get something going. Extend that lead. The game has been tied only when it was the start at 0-0. Has not been tied since 13 minutes to go in the first quarter. Here we go across the crease. Beautiful shot. He's on his beautiful goal by number 24, Sean Tobin. Tobin running around the low shot and just kind of golfs it in there. Yeah, it looks like low. a backhand. Is, yeah, I'm uh, going to be completely honest. That was so fast, I missed it. High degree <laughs> of difficulty on that one. Absolutely. Coming around crease, there's not much goalie can do because that was a beautiful shot. They're low, like you said, backhand. Yeah, they're not expecting those most of the time. Skillful? Either. It's very, very skillful. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Would you say he's got talent? <laughs> I would. <laughs> Nathan, one day I'm going to bring you a lacrosse stick and we'll toss around. How about that? <laughs> okay. I'm excited for this day. We'll make sure to record it. <laughs> Pack TV extra. The ball is now caked in mud, if you could see it, from, from the face-off X. The X is now getting a lot of work. It's being destroyed. It's almost as bad as the goal mounts. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, some gamesmanship down there by Elliot Benedict. They had two people lost their sticks. I, I watched. I missed where the ball went, but this is a yeah, lot the more stick important. Stick was being thrown. I mean, <laughs> it was a savvy move by Benedict. It, there. it, it is amazing. Is that allowed though? I'm not sure. I Wait. don't. You know, it's not allowed, but you know what the ref doesn't see. Won't yeah, he can't it. call exactly, but I think it's rather unsportsmanlike, maybe. It's just gamesmanship. Hey, it is. That was a great play there by Benedict, oh. making sure, hey, you can't play if you don't have it. <laughs> so he just flung it. And, and as we said, the stick is an extension of your arm, so without it, you are completely lost. You are called for a penalty if you're playing without a stick. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so... Yeah, I can imagine them throwing it with their hands and catching it. It's a hard ball. Yeah, it's not yeah. like <laughs> hockey where you're allowed to catch it if it goes in the air, <laughs> seeing how lacrosse is all in the air. Yeah. But you, in hockey, you are allowed to play if your stick breaks. You are not in, the, in lacrosse. If your stick breaks during play, you, you drop it where it lies, and then you run out, and someone else comes oh in. Oh, dear. And slip it. Yeah, slip. The referee there was right next okay. to it. Oh, dear. Ball is in. Oh. And a, <sighs> just a push. That's kind of unneeded. I close. think he was probably going to fall down by himself. I don't know if you could really call it. Oh, Very a yard nice sale. Kick. <laughs> nice Someone shot. around us just called it a whirly bird, which I really like. It might be fighting slippage for my new favorite word. Yeah. I'm going to start using it more then. <laughs> a little whirly bird. just happened over there. And here we go. Harrison Ryder bringing it up. Short pass. Most of these passes look like they've been going short both teams. They've been leaving some off of these passes, trying to not send it too high with the slippery net. Yeah, especially also with the ground. You don't want to be having to you know, overextend your run and slip on the ground and the ball's going so far away from you. you know? And there you go. And there is no over and back this year. The ball just went out of bounds. They do not play over and back anymore with this new 80 second shot clock rule. And here's yellow calls, yellow calls. Ball's now been moved over. Ball's with number 14, Ian Lucas. 6.30 on the clock. Ball's now up with 22, Tyler Gaffney. Move to Hale. Hale starting from full head of steam. Oh, a little bounce pass there, it looks like. Almost like I got checked in the back of the head as well. And you hear Tong call fire. He wanted that slide and he got it. Good check. Ball's up to Tong. Tong's in front. You hear him move yelling. Dangerous you gotta boy. move that quick. There we go. Laundry. Remember what I was talking about earlier? If you come out of cage, you're normally gonna draw a penalty. Ball's up. You have Henshaw. I got a chance now to move forward quickly. Stan with a beautiful pass. All right. Great pass. Attempt on goal. And then to the back of the net. It's a goal. Superb work from State. That was number 24, Sean Tobin, with the second goal of the game. I think Tong got bailed out. 
bailed out on that one. Got rid of the ball, and State was able to turn it into a goal. Yeah, and, and you all didn't get to see this, but Sam did hit himself again I on did. the uh, tent I we have here. And he was jumping around a bit ecstatically. I put my hand see. up for the goal because I saw it roll in, and I smacked my left hand on the metal on the metal reinforcement of this tent. And I'm starting to think that this tent might be a liability. 6-3 <laughs> now to State. That was Tobin's second goal, and that was another beauty by Tobin. But Parker Stadden had a beautiful pass to him to find that him in that transition. Pass. Good across the field, perfect height, not too much power, you know, not too low, right where he needed it to be. As we were talking, too, he, where most people have been taking some off their passes, it looked like Parker put the right amount perfect. on that pass. Yeah. That that was a bowler suit, it would have been perfect for Goldilocks. And we see NC State <laughs> with a man up advantage as well. Well, some stories say suit. Suit might be I've heard it twice. No, no, no. I've heard it twice. We need to fact check that one. Can we get our director Ojan on the case? We'll let you know about the soup and porridge situation of Goldilocks. And as we return for some more hot action on the field, NC State wins the faceoff. Balls off with number three, refive, he moves it down. They're slowing the game down a little bit now. Yeah, looking see more if possessed. NC State can take advantage of that goal and now man up and that extend their lead to four. And oh, good nug there by number seven. On the game. Well done to intercept that. And looks like we're back to even. It's hard to count. No, we are not. I see the man on his knee. Number 12, Matt McCauley. McCauley just dumps it down. Almost had the snag there with Almost the Almost successful, but not quite. Henshaw now moves it up. Good pass by Henshaw. Number 24, Tobin. And Tobin's just going to jog it up. No need to sprint. No need to sprint yet. Ball moved down to Walls. And you hear Coach yelling, keep it hot, keep it hot. Now they're going to move it around. No yellow call for NC State yet. Ivy moves it up. Yeah, it's number 21, Schultz. Correct me. It is Chris Schultz as I hear players, I hear some fans Damn. next to me shouting, go Chris. Chris, good move. Moves it down to Walls. Oh. Walls low to high. That's I like that. That was a beautiful shot mm. going low to high. I don't, I don't think... Uh, Catchatory was really ready for a low to high. He's yeah, been no. seeing high. Not at all. Switch that one up on him. <coughs> Caught me by surprise too. He's been seeing high to low action all day. Getting that now. Tobin, Tobin's got a good matchup. You got to put the LSM on Tobin. He's got that speed that will be negated by a six foot stick. Here we go, Schultz again. Schultz with the jab out, trying to regather his foot, and he gets it. Good, Good save. save by Cacciatore. Cacciatore, quick outlet to Ott. Ott takes a check in the stomach, takes one on the opposite hip. Ott now moves it down to Brady. Brady can't Brady can't come up with that one. He's got, if he had that, I think that was going in the back of the net. Yeah, that's, that you see a sloppy play coming up again. Drew just got slapped right that on the hip. It painful, didn't it? It did, and Moss. Oh. All right, Moss catches goal. it and makes him pay right on the I'm not right sure how he managed to do that because he was facing away from the goal. He's right on the crease. Keeper should have been able to do something about it, you would think, but managed to turn and get the shot off nicely and put it in the back of the net. Yeah, that was, a, that was some good balance. There. Superb bit of skill. Absolutely. I think Cacciatore was worried that if he started to go too early to Moss, that I think Walls would have just pulled that shot instead of passing yeah. it, leaving yeah, the open right net. There, yeah. We're so starting to see that was a tough spot for catch Tory. Yeah. Starting to see the less sloppy team pull away here as they're converting on some goals. Speaking of sloppy, rain is starting to fall once more. It Light held rain up though. for a little bit. It is Another it's good spitting, spitting, as you would say. Which is nice because it's not torrential, which means we we we're all not going to get wet, the, everyone here. So be just light. It may affect the way the ball is, though. A little bit more slippy. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't think the ground will be as impacted as much because when it is lighter rain, it just sort of seeps in the ground and absorbs it, um, doesn't sit on top. Just infiltrates just a little bit. 
I've been learning about the water cycle this week, oh, guys. So. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and then bring a little bit of knowledge to your lacrosse games. Here. We're not just broadcasters, student broadcasters. And there we go. Speaking of Slack, speaking wow, of knowledge, though. number ten tried to knock some out of out of Hank Moss's dome there with a check to the check to the helmet, and we're gonna have a penalty, and. That is number nine. Moves it. Ooh, oh, big that was check. A big hit. Big hit. Knocked him right off his feet. Once again, showing that if you go inside on this UCF team, you're gonna get you're gonna let it. You're gonna, gonna, gonna end up you on know. your back, yeah. yeah. They're gonna let you know. As Parker Stadden ending up on the receiving end, but NC State right now is seven three. It doesn't look like they're too <laughs> too scared to end up on the ground if it's gonna result in goals. We've had a couple of them that have resulted in players getting hit, but also scoring. And as we have another timeout, NC State's going to go man up once more. I don't know. I think they've only been they've been up man up five times. Still only one goal. Will this be their fifth time? The five or six times now. I still think they do only have that one goal on man up. I believe you're correct. And yeah, it was on their last one, more more recent one in the earlier on. Earlier it was on their the fourth. It was on their fourth one. Fourth attempt. Yeah. And. As NC State's in the huddle, what do you think the UCF coach is telling his team? Score. Man, just keep I mean, being aggressive. Yeah. But they're I mean, <laughs> most <laughs> simply, <laughs> score some goals. Thank you, Bill they're, they're four down, but <laughs> yeah. they, they've got to do. They've got to be more successful than just. I mean, they, they have the ball. They do well when they have possession, but they're not putting the ball in the back of the net. And I think it sounds very simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, it's more complicated than that when you're on the field, but. Mm. They've got to get in the right mindset. Right? They've got to believe that that's the easiest path. Take the path, score some goals, level the game up, change the way they're playing somehow. Overall, score some more goals. Absolutely. Now, how do you think they will get back into the way of scoring some goals? They need to get over this hump of three. They've been stuck on three for a while now. And, Trevor, what do you think the best way to get back into this game for UCF is. I think uh, number one thing they could do to get back in the game is simply stop dropping passes. Yeah, they do that quite often. Notice that as well. Obviously, if you don't keep possession of the ball, that's going to be a problem. Yep. Um, especially going forward, and you're close to close to scoring a goal. If you drop the passes, you're not going to be you having the ball in your in mm -hmm. your sticks. You're not going to score any. Yeah, exactly. We had a they had a good opportunity down there. Did Brady on a fast break, but just dropped it right out the stick and then went back in favor of NC State. And they've had too many of those that ended up with what-if opportunities. Yeah. And you want to limit that if you're this UCF team. And as they're sending out some of their athletes, you got Cacciatore talking to the rep, and he's just trying to butter them up, maybe get some more calls. Find out, what are, what are we doing wrong, sir? What are we doing? And... Here we go, NC State, bring it out. And gonna wanna think, gonna feed Reef Ivy. He had that one beautiful man up goal. They're gonna move it around, keep it hot. That's something that I've really liked seeing NC State do recently, this game. They've been moving it around at a very good pace. Yeah, they're playing well. I think both teams have done well when passing the ball, especially in their final third. I think quick passes. There you go. You hear coaches yelling, get it hot, get it hot. You want to start moving around quick, quick. Just don't let two them minutes left. Don't let them well. set. They've got a score. I would say either team would help to score before. Yeah, as you see, if you want to try to get the game within two or three goals here by the time it goes to halftime. You got Moss State, you want to keep it at four or more. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe even extend the lead, yeah. NC State looking to extend. Oh, uh -oh out the back. NC State looking to extend their lead while... UCF is looking to cut into it. Moss, high pass Attempt at two now. in the same Ooh. position. Great save there by Ketchatori. Yeah, very good and save. And we're going to have a flag. flag on NC State as Ketchatori still has it. Ketchatori looking for someone. That's well to maneuver Easy out of there. pass, too. Those man just waiting clear. for him. Good clear. And here we go. UCF has an opportunity to either. They've got, they've got a free possession now, so get the best shot that you can, and then they're going to go in. Depending on the time, they'll either not waste it so that they can have an even face or or they can have no face coming out of half or they'll just get a goal now. 
And here they go. There's 40 seconds left. I have players coming in, getting fresh legs, fresh legs. You have yellow, we got 30 seconds, as you said. Ball's now with number 22. Moved over to 32. 24, Hale looking for something. Ball's down low, and it's still not scooped up. Still low, still on the ground. I think the keeper's got that one. Tong scoops it up as time still is running off the clock. It looks like they should add a little more seconds back, but I think UCF wouldn't get mad if they left 11 seconds off, leaving leaving them just run around, keep possession, and then they will have no face off in the start of the second in the start of the second half, and they'll just keep the ball. And I think that's what the coach is telling his team. Yeah, I mean, personally, I would like to try to get a shot in here. It doesn't hurt to get a shot in before the half, but in your man up. But going into the second half with a man up on the face would be would an yeah. advantage as well. Then you want to keep possession there so you have no face. You just yeah. That's what they're doing. No face, and they'll just run in. And time runs out. And Benedict gets a little chippy, and they're going to call another penalty. I Right in front of the UC, UCF bench there as well. That's a little bit dangerous. Yeah, I... I don't know. And then you got Ballsboro trying to calm down Benedict, and Benedict just throws out a stick. I don't think he wants to hear it. I don't know if they should have called that. Now Now that's going to tell a different story coming into the second half. Is play going to get a little tightened up by these referees, or are they going to make it less chippy? What's going to go on? And we'll be right back at a 7-3 in favor of the Wolfpack. Hi, and welcome back down to Lower Method Field. NC State is up 7-3, and I am now joined by number 11, Andrew Matherly. Matherly is out right now with a grade two hamstring injury, and he was telling me a little bit about it, and I'll let him tell you about it right now. What happened to you? Uh, <laughs> just tweaked it in practice and then went, went too hard during the game, and it, uh, it was against Vanderbilt. We mm -hmm. just kind of pulled up in the first, first quarter. Yeah, I couldn't play the rest rest of the tournament. That was one of the injuries that we've been s that the NC State team has suffered. We had Matherly go down, and Baker went down against Wake Forest with a concussion. And how how has this team stepped up in lieu of y both you and Baker? Uh, we've had a lot of guys step up, and I've noticed like the sharing the ball and like getting assisted goals has just risen. We've all like come together as a team and become more uh, helpful towards each other. And then looking at the game now, what have you noticed out of the team, out of NC State? How have they been playing without you and Baker right now? Uh, we've been, we, like I said, we've just been moving the ball well. We've uh, been playing smart. Uh, Sean, number 24, stepped up a lot. He's been doing a lot of good offensive plays. Tobin has two goals right now. And where do you want to see them improve in the second half right now? Uh, just taking care of the ball and uh, try and limit the penalties. We've had a couple unnecessary penalties in the first half. Try and get rid of those in the second one. Now, right as you say, the penalties, it's been a, it's gotten a little chippy at some points, especially with that last penalty being called on Benedict at the end of the, of the, end of the half. Do you think that will change the way the game is played? Do you think the refs are starting to tighten up and realize what's going on and that it's going to rein in the players? Uh, I think it's going to depend on how the teams come out in the second half. Like if they're both still coming out and chippy, the refs are going to put their foot down, throw a couple flags off the start, and get them in line. Absolutely. And now I'd like to say thank you for joining us on this broadcast, and we'll be right back as the huddles start, start to break. We'll be right back in a few moments. And welcome back down to Lower Method Field. We're going to have no face-off. We're going to have UCF start with it. It's going to be with number five. We're going to get a quick whistle going here, and we're going to be off to the races. As there was a penalty, there were two penalties on NC State to close the half. Had one with 10 seconds being called, and then one right when it ended. Now, number five for, for UCF, Zachary Ott, is going to start with the ball. Ott's looking for something going on. And here we go. 
It's going to be four on six right now for this Golden Knights team as they're moving around, looking for someone. Balls up with Brady. Brady moves it around. And NC State's playing as a diamond right now. Oh, good Great save. save. And you hear the bench erupt in the chorus right there. As they're proud of their boy. As I think the penalty might release soon. Balls up. A risky pass, and we're gonna have someone coming out to get it. That was, I think, Pryor playing aggressively on the wing. Pryor with a beautiful back pedal. Skip pass. And beautiful goal there. It's now 7-4, it's number 14. Ian Lucas on the goal, and that releases, I believe, both penalties. And we're gonna have William McGowan come out, number 34. For the face. Hard to stop a cannon. Oh, <laughs> I was that is true. That was a cannon on a shot right there. And here you go. It's now a three goal lead. And it, lacrosse is a game of runs. You don't have to be one goal away to to make your presence known. If you're three goals away, it's still a close game in lacrosse. Absolutely, you can put up three goals in two minutes in this game. I mean, a bit of miscommunication or unawareness there. The ball was right behind him, having difficulty finding that. No one knew where it was no. except <laughs> for the fans and us. It was a bit comical. Brady. Yeah, it did look comical. Brady now getting attacked by balls, bro. Can really use his body to play. Yeah, teasing stick, him there. That was a bit of a tease. Balls now being moved around. Balls at X with Brady. Brady now looks for number 32. Balls off with 27. Over to 22. Starts his move. Guarded by Be Benedict. Benedict back in after getting that good penalty. Good shot. And good Very save. Nice check by Benedict there to slow down the shot. Bit of confusion and there. I think Benedict got called for something there. As he's trying to run off. It's going to go back to UCF. And if you saw Benedict, he was tentative to sl slide body there. He slid more stick. And I think that might have been an effect due to – and a high check. Number 24 gets up looking for the penalty. I don't think that they had any choice but to slide on that. He slipped a little bit and kind of gave his chest up and made it, making it look a lot worse. That was number 25, Connor Boyle on the penalty. And – that is another penalty on a check that we're seeing. I think they might start tightening tightening up the restraints on the players. You know, Sam, however high that check was, the flag went even higher. Did you see how high he threw the flag? He did chuck I that I have thing. to point that out. Launched. <laughs> Launched. <laughs> Almost got sent into orbit, I saw. Yeah. And I was wondering if that one was going to come down. <laughs> Ruff was going to have to go to the... It was going to oh, spread its wings and fly off. <laughs> Ruff was going to have to go to a uh, food line across the street to go get a new flag. <laughs> now get a new handkerchief. <laughs> Maybe the laundromat had something for him. <laughs> How it Do you like uh, to see that hit from NC State, though? Especially with UCF being the aggressor early on. Now it looks like NC State's going to say, hey, we can bully, too. Yeah. Here's a context. <laughs> it sounded like a turkey was on the field. I don't mean to interrupt you there, Trevor, but it no. sounded, I heard a turkey gobbling around. And that's going to be going 33 with the chase as I get dropped by water from our tent. There's a little bit of wind at the moment. Nothing too damaging, I don't think, to the game, but you can definitely feel it. It does not help with this cold. That's Beautiful nice save by Tom. Good defending, too, from the whole team. Brady had no choice but to do a one-handed shot. Yeah, it's a nice move by him to get to the front of the crease, a little duck and dodge, but... And we've um, got... We've got balls row up. Balls now over with Pryor. He had two, two long poles on the offensive side. We've got one over is Ivy. And then the next is coming in. I can't see the number. And we're even strength, six on six for the NC State. Ivy runs off. He's going to get Andrew Davis to take his spot. Davis 
threads the needle to pass a little behind him, allowing the defender to come oh. through. Oh, high check and no flag. There. I looked at the ref, he was pointing chest, said he got him in the chest. That was clean. That was uh, clean. It did look clean. It's a big hit, though. It was a big hit. UCF has some big boys on their team. UCF's definitely a little bit bigger of a team here today. They yeah. can use that to their advantage, but NC State's been more fundamental. Tobin running around. Tobin with that speed, guarded by a long stick. That their coach heeded my advice, putting the long stick on Tobin. Quick shot by Davis. Ball's now over. Good spin move there by number 12. Matt McCauley. McCauley, great Austin. ride by Walls. Walls pushing him out. And Walls is going to run quick. Just passes it back to Schultz. There's Sean Tobin. There's Schultz. Hey, it shows his hair. That's not his hair. It's uh, He's got grass Looks stains like all up. Yeah, yeah exactly. a lot of mud on the back. That's a bouncing shot again. Looked like it was almost going to trouble the goalkeeper, but just wide. Just wide by Moss there. Balls at X. Waiting for the whistle. Slow start on that one. Oh, pushing the back. No call. And great check there by number seven. The UCF bench is extremely excited. They are. They're getting really into it. They know they have a chance to come in. Yep, the 7-4 is not necessarily something to, to look on and uh, go by. And UCF, they're looking for their first one of the season. They played a scrimmage. We talked to their coach. He didn't really count that one as a win. It was against a lesser D2 school. He's, he equated it kind of to an FCS game of football. And so this would be, mean a lot to UCF coming in to, to Raleigh and getting an upset win and their first of the season over this NC State team. Yeah, it'd be a nice one to get on the road, um, especially after they lost to Liberty, I believe it was. They, they lost to Liberty, I think, yesterday in a 14-7 game. And Liberty, that's nothing to be ashamed of. Liberty is a very good team in this conference. They're normally at the upper echelon every season. And so they're really getting, they're really giving a test and getting a watermark for how good they are against the state team. Staying in, and there they go. NC State tiptoeing, check on Walls. Walls still making a play from his, from the from the ground. That's a nice pass. Nice pass over. Oh. It's coming to me. A little bit too much. <laughs> just Sam, out of my Sam's reach. I'm trying to run and pick that one up, but yeah. I was just trying to help out, help out Ryer. Oh, Ryer get hits himself in the back of the head with the ball there, and. That was a good idea, but I think he lost it in the, in the sky there. It's it white. Yeah, too much on especially with this, this such bland, bleak sky, especially with the white ball. Like it just The two of them just don't go well together. They really don't. Especially if you're looking up in the air. It's almost as if you're looking up in the air and the sun's straight in your eyes, but so bright yet so white at the same time. And back on the field, in the white helmets, Hank Moss coming down. And speaking of the white, uh, in, in the MLL, the Major League Lacrosse, they play with an orange ball, actually, to, to make it a lot easier to spot. Yeah, be maybe that would have been a, a good decision to be change. It interesting to see if NCAA goes to those rules soon. That's a very good point there, Trevor. They do play with the orange balls, making it easier to see. And here we go. I, I was going to ask that question, actually. What color of the ball, is it always white? It depends on the league. Yeah, it, up until up until the major leagues. Because even with the even white today, ball. maybe a darker ball would have, have been helped. Yeah. Mm. Maybe a blue or something, just so that you can you know change the tell the contrast against the sky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice Henshaw, I believe, on the defense there. It's a 33 on 33 crime down at X. Ball's now being moved around eight minutes to go in this third quarter. Good slide. Good movement there. Really good movement. Ball's up with number five. That is Ott. Ott swings it down. Oh, clings off the the, <laughs> the soccer goals. Ball is still kind of in play. Referee goes down <laughs> to sort that out. Gaffney moves it up. Ball is over with Ott. Ott 
He's looking for something as it has the cutter. Shakes Quick its feet. head a lot there. There's a lot of dancing. There's a lot of dancing, not a lot of movement. <laughs> no. Good spin move there by 33. Shiloh. UCF would like to move the ball now with NC State running around. And that's a shot clock violation. NC State's going to have a lot of energy off that one. Defense really holding their ground on that one. Here you go, Parker Statton. Ooh. Nope, almost slipping. Almost slipping. Kind of did a reverse Michael Jackson there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Long ball. Like to see State. Oh. As well. Oh. Caught off the tip. He's going to want to shoot now, maybe. Oh. oh. Tried to pass it down to Moss. Moss could not rein it in. That is number 24. Sean Tobin that just was able to catch it off the tip. Ball's high, Moss with it now. Moss running around. Almost looking Brings unsure of where to go with the ball there. Mm -hmm. Brings it down to Tobin. Tobin, good spin move there by Tobin. Looking for someone to get it to. Sends it to X. Moss looking for someone as well. Trying to be sneaky right, there, Big but hit. quite do Back so. And a little taunting there by number seven, Daniel Ferrari. I don't think the referees saw it, but I don't think they had let him get away with that. If they did, he kind of stood over Moss there. He kind of slapped his stick a little bit. So I think this, this UCF team is really about their aggressiveness. They want to assert their dominance over it any team they play, and yeah. they've been really doing it against yeah. the state offense. They're the bigger, faster team right now, and they're playing like it. Now here's Schultz. Score is still 7-4. Both benches and both coaches very, very excited. Lots of talk Super in here. Super high energy. Lots of chattering on this field, as you just said, Nathan. Good run. They're really playing aggressive on these adjacent, adjacent men. Ball's now at X. Good play there by the goalie. That was a tough pass to make. That was. Catch Torrey had his stick there. Now it's with number 20, Cole, Cole Ross. Moves it up. Number 22, Tyler Gaffney. Gaffney's just going to set it down. Takes a lick to the arm there by Pryor. Balls up with the Ott. Ball's just being moved around. Not a lot of action has happened on either side so far. Ott. Looks for something. You hear coaches shouting, press it, press it. They don't want any free hands inside the box there. Great movement there by UCF. Don't know how the ball got picked up. Very messy at the moment. It was messy. Saved by Tobin, or not Tobin. By Tong. Tong, thank you. And on the rides, good catch by Hinshaw, but on these rides by, by UCF, they're really aggressive in making Ooh. Tong beat them. They're going to put a man on Tong every time, right in his face, to challenge him, to make it, to, uh, to force him into making well, a decision. That's what you want, though, especially with this early decision in the game and early mistake. You know, UCF wants to definitely capitalize on any many any mistakes may he may make. Absolutely, they see that he they might be able to force him into some mistakes, like yeah. the one you said earlier where he dropped in front of the goal. And that's a very good idea, but that's a great coaching decision, dis decision, decision. <laughs> by UCF. It is cold, please forgive us. <laughs> <laughs> it is cold, I still can't feel my toes. Good try there by Tong, trying to slide over and get it, but the ball goes out the back, chased down by number 33. Just three been a minutes while left. Since we've seen a goal. Yeah, yeah, three been. minutes left. It has been a while since we've seen a goal. And that's very true. I wonder if we'll see one before the end of the third quarter. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Oh, Dan, haven't seen a lot of Brady yet. Oh, Brady in a while. Save. Almost, Almost snuck out the back of his net, but Tong with it. Tong makes Good a ball. beautiful pass. He was pressured on that one as well. Beautiful pass to Pryor. He's moving very quickly now. And Good pass, and he finished. No finish. offsides, they have Does men well. back. That's the back of the net. That was not right as sides. we had anticipated as well. That's you need evident. one before the end of the third quarter. You know, Ryer, I very important. That's a quick play. And may I say, Tong, Tong was the one, I think. Pryor that, you know, pushed that one down to him. And, and starting off with Tong in the back as well, that official pass, uh, uh, the, um, yeah. the first pass, it just two really good made very two helpful, good passes, yeah. but one by the goalie, one by Longstick. Tong with the save, starting it from there, goes out the back of the crease, has a beautiful pass, as you guys have been saying, to Pryor. Pryor runs it down, gets it to Ryer, and Ryer puts it in the back of the net. Superb speed from Pryor as well. And that was yeah. great awareness by NC State. That was not offsides. They did have a man waiting in the back. So it's now 8-4 legally. That play stands, and NC State brings their lead back to four. And here's McGowan going, forces out the back, but picked up by UCF. Or is it? Good pick up there by Harrison Ryder. Ryder moves it over. That's Ryer. Ryer coming off that goal. Looks, looks over to Moss. And now with Walls. Walls with a good, good move. move. Looks for another one. But he's just going to. It almost oh. looked like he was going to be selfish there, but not quite. Yeah, it looked. And here we go. Good pass. Oh, oh you got to catch that. Bring it in. That was a beautiful find by, by NC State there. See the cutting man unmarked, but number 15, That's Dorian Gothard, that couldn't get that. A very nice breakup by Elliot Benedict right there. Benedict running it down, looking for somewhere to go. Bounce pass. Uh, Benedict ends up on the ground. We're going to have a three on two fast break. Ball's moved down. Ball's moved Ooh. up. And Brady just ha has a high pass, but Brady has looked like he's had some trouble catching the ball today. That was a great hustle play, but I believe that was number 32. That's that back of the net. Brady makes Marco up Montero. An assist right there, though. And someone's going to have to fill me in on that one. And as I looked away, the goal happened. Well, I'm going to be honest. I was expecting a goal there. The first break to begin with. There should have been a goal. Brady couldn't catch it. All right, he keeps going. He's working hard. He gets the ball back across. There's one catch there. Easy shot on goal. He's close. Not much dispute there. Um, it's simple. But obviously, the hard work from the break, very important. Yeah, number 13, Marco Montero. He dove out, made sure to get that check. The ball went out of Henshaw's stick in the back, leading to that goal, letting them keep possession. That was a very good hustle play that won't show up in the stat book. That is a great job by Montero to make sure they get back, get that ball back. Ball's on the ground. Just number six I'll comes in, clears it out, but it's going to be a four on three fast three. break. Ball's moved Henshaw. down. Great play by Hinshaw on that coma to make sure. Thought he was trying to get a shot off himself. Maybe he should have passed it. But ball is going to stay with UCF. UCF. Yeah. I think they're saying he got pushed into the crease, maybe. But that, that was a great play by Hinshaw to make sure that he did not get a clean pass over to Brady. 8-5 here with one minute to go in the third quarter. And here we go. Ball's being moved around. Quick strides by number 24, Adam Hale. Hale moves it out to 40. Kettering, Kettering looking around. Kettering over to Gaffney. Gaffney down the left alley. Slide comes. Back to Kettering, Kettering over, balls on the ground. Montero can't, or Shillo. You hear him shouting one more. Balls, bro, can't get it to him. He's going to run it over. Good pass to Walls. Walls feeds Moss. Mm. Shot. I don't know I where think that maybe he saved that one. Uh, no, he Goalie's out of the goal. Goalie's mm. out. Had a defenseman pick him up. He dropped that pass. There's a missed opportunity by State mm. right there. Missed opportunity by Moss. Had uh, had the goalie catch a tour. He's out of the goal. They have five seconds. You'd like to see him get a shot off. Three, two. Oh, ball almost went in the net. 
trying to cradle it, and it came out. It went right over the top there. Thought that was about to go in. And as the fours come up, it is 8-5 in favor of this Wolfpack team. And what have you two seen in that third quarter? Things really seem to slow down. Yeah. It, yeah. It's kind of like we could have done without the first 13 minutes. Really, it was kind of slow getting into it. And then those two minutes, it really got fast quick. Yeah, there was only, what, two goals? One from each team in that believe, third quarter or so? Uh, I believe there's two goals. I two believe goals. there's right. two so goals. Yes. Not as many as, as prior in the first half. And um, I had to say, the game is not as interesting as it was to begin the first half, I think. Um, that's obviously just my personal opinion. But the intensity, I think, has gone down a little bit. Trevor? There's not much I don't agree with what you just said. Uh, uh, you'd like I'd like to see them. I've been saying it all game, but not be as so sloppy. Kind of saw mm. both teams miss out on a couple opportunities yeah. for goals there in that third quarter because of drop passes. A lot of drop passes, and I think that definitely does impact the game a lot, especially when moving yeah. forward, um, or even as defending. It's when getting the ball out the back. If you, you can't keep the ball controlled in your stick, you're going to be dropping it all over the place, and then that's going to result in other getting scored on as we did see in the first half um, from goalkeeper Tong, and also um, going forward to score your goals. Yeah. You want to keep the ball, keep the possession. You don't want to be dropping the ball around, especially in such vital areas where you should be putting the ball in the back of the net. And yeah. it really was the opposite start to the first half. We had two quick goals by NC State, having two goals with 13 minutes to go, to 13 minutes, two minutes gone in the first half, that mm. first quarter. But at the end, it really got exciting in that last yeah. two, three minutes there. And I think that intensity might carry over knowing all you have, you have 15 minutes to get back into yep. this game. Only 15 minutes left in this in this game. And I think maybe the cold is really taking to effect now. Mm. For me, my toes are numb and my fingers are numb. Even I've got gloves on. Um, but it's just so cold and it's seeping through and it will probably affect the players for the rest of the game. Only 15 minutes left, as I just mentioned. 8-5 to five NC State. Here we go. And our last game we covered, it was against Wake Forest, who's also a golden black team. NC State had a seven-goal lead going in that fourth quarter, and they only ended up winning by two. So they, they want to make sure to hold on to that lead better than they did against Wake Forest, and this is a much smaller lead. So yeah. you got to think if you're NC State, it's you going to be score. key. <laughs> score some more goals maybe, be a bit tighter defensively, not lose the ball, don't drop the ball. you got to win those battles for sure. You yeah. do, and then it's going to be important for them to come out with the same amount of intensity as UCF because you see them fired up. Yeah, right now. exactly, and that is intimidating, especially if you're a state player right there in front of those that bench and you're trying to fight for the ball and you've got all of those gold helmets around you. That's scary to me. Right Especially with all that intensity coming out of them, the noise they're making, it's just crazy. Especially r right in front of them, you had the players for NC State trying to pick up a ground ball, but all around them you had UCF players swarming, and you could see them feeding off the energy of that bench, really making them, f making a, themselves a presence, kind of as a seventh man yelling, yelling to get their team going. And 20, 19 seconds have passed, and we've already got a timeout, and UCF seems fired up right now I'm looking for them to I think they're gonna attack quick I don't think they're gonna set settle into their offense on this six on six opportunity coming out I think they're gonna come firing with that energy feeding off their bench yeah I agree I agree I think we're gonna see some fast shots here from them <coughs> yeah, and Trevor if, if you're in this situation you're NC State right now you're playing what's going on in your head what have you got to do to ensure this victory you want to possess the ball at this point in the fourth quarter and work it around, work up the, sh use up the shot clock and then yeah. just uh, put some good shots on goal and not turn the ball over and giving UCF easy opportunities to uh, scratch back. Make okay. sure you yeah. possess the ball if you're NC State. Mm. They've had some trouble holding on. Both teams have, but most recently NC State and got, especially with with UCF really having the momentum and the energy right now. Yeah, I've got to agree with you on that. Their momentum is superb. The energy is very high. State's kind of lacking in that. I think it does help UCF has a large bench. Um, State, obviously, is a much smaller bench. Mm -hmm. And that whole team unity 
behind you is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. Balls now at X with Brady. Brady quickly moves it over. You have UCF had a oh. play from the beginning, and ball is going to go NC State's away. 33 was not able to really get a good pass there and just went off the stick of his attackman and it went out the back. Now it looks for a tough ride. They got them all marked up on, on the defenseman. Now ball's over with Tong. Let the goalie go. No one's on Tong yet. They're yes. just going to play, man. Keywood. Yeah. Just, Tong's no just moving it up until someone will come for him. Tong good. finds the man that was good prior pass. on the cut. Dropped it but still has it. Pryor just looking for somewhere to go with it. Man on the back of Tobin. It's a good decision to pull it out. Yeah, there was a light little hit from behind there as well on, on Tobin. But that was a great job by Tong. Tong just moving it up, moving mm. it up slowly, yeah. waiting for someone to come to him or get open. And then boom, Pryor yeah. just Interesting that nobody down. pressured him as well, especially with his mistake earlier. You think they capitalize on that? I think it was quite only tight for the most point. I think he was three steps away from getting pressured. Yeah. I think he is, if he took three more, I think that they were coming for him. Yeah, that's good analysis. Thank you. Very exact as well. Ball, oh, oh, shot off. I thought the ball was on the I ground. I thought that was Beautiful going in. save. And it looks like we have a goalie change. The UCF bench is on fire right now. We have new, we have Jeremy flag in, flag moves it around, number 23. Oh. Ball's on the ground. Great pickup by Moss. Oh, oh another that pass, great play. Quite. Great nug there by Very number nice 12. Play. Matt McCauley. McCauley, beautiful play. Ball's on the ground. Good ground ball by UCF right there. It's number seven. Good cradle. Ooh, Ball's on the ground. It's out. And it's going to go NC State way. That was a, a really great play there by McCauley. Ball's up. Now Benedict moves it over, balls with walls. Elliot just runs off. That's another man to come on. Now we got six on six. Number 12, Ryer with it. Running around towards the X. Walls looks like he's going for a screen, cuts around crease. Ryer Ooh. shoots it, goes a little wide. I do think that bouncing shot idea is going to be more successful than it has been because the goalkeeper has a bit more trouble dealing with the shot when it's bouncing. It's more unpredictable that way. Absolutely, especially yeah. with these conditions that yeah. we have today. Don't know how that bounce is going to be. I don't even think the shooter will know. Beautiful idea there by, by Walls. Gives a jump shot. and then, But a great save there by Fleek. Like now with it, balls up, bounces right into the to the net of number 20, and NC State really Snapped not allowing ball. him to get over. Get Got 20 seconds to get it over. There's Walls. Balls on the ground still. Oh, a little bit of a little. Uh, did you see that one there? Yeah, yeah. away from the ball. That's number yeah. 25 with it, with oh. the little play. Oh, jumped a little too ball. soon. I'm not too oh. well versed. Hinshaw rules, now with it. That can't be fair. That's a really nice Travis Hinshaw, ball. looking for something here. Hinshaw told me earlier that if he scored, he would point up at me. So I'm looking for a goal here by <laughs> Hinshaw. And no longer is Hinshaw on the offensive half. He is running over. So I think we'll have to wait for our Hinshaw goal. You hear UCF bench yelling, talk it up, talk it up. We can't hear you. They want that defense communicating, get that energy going. But balls with Stadden now. Stadden scrapes across, going down the goalie's right alley. Have a screen by number 15. That was Gothard. Balls with Walls now. Walls feeds oh, good save. Gothard down low. That was a great save yeah, by the well goalie there. to make himself big, getting right in front of the shot. And now we've got a four on three fast break, but Stanton with the speed to make it a four on four. Good job, Stanton, getting in the recovery. And now we're going to have an even. Just going to go yellow and slow it down. 
Ball's up with number 14. Ian Lucas again. 10 minutes left, three point game still. Absolutely, th three, three goal game. UCF would like to get one in the net here on this possession. Yeah, energy and momentum is definitely with UCF. Lucas now with it, Hinshaw on him, Hinshaw on his hands. Balls over, balls over to Shilo. Shilo with it, setting up, it's him on stand, he's got the shorty, good slide. That was number 13 by NC State. There's that 19, that's Pryor on him. That was a great slide by Pryor, ball oh. goes low. There is no over and back. I guess there is. There have been some times where they call it, sometimes they don't. I I was told that there was no over and back this season, but I guess I am wrong. Wall's now with it. Over and back, if there is over and back, it's just like basketball. If Unless it is tipped out by the defensive team, if it's just the offensive team's fault, and you touch it on the other side, it goes to the defending team. It looks like a guy away with a slash in the head there. I, I like the no call because he slipped he on did that slip. one. I agree. I, oh, that was a vicious slap right down to the wrists there. That was a good, that was a good cut. Here we go, Moss getting worked on by McCauley. Here's the other shells. You can hear the state bench there getting a little bit more involved, a bit more energy from them. Yeah, both benches are really making their presence known. Ball's down with Moss. Moss moves it over. Has the cutter. Ball bounces. Ooh. But you hear him counting down the shot out, clock. Maybe? Shot. Oh. Ooh. I, I don't see a signal for them to reset the shot clock. Yeah, 15 seconds left on the shot clock. The ball's out of the Moss's stick. Ball's down. Ball's still up. And did they signal for... Now no, they're going to signal possession yeah. has changed. Now shot clock has, has switched. Pass, that was a goal. very good pass. Now ball's up with Hale. Hale is running it down. Eight min under eight minutes left. Three goal game. NC State still in the driver's seat. Ball's with Brady. You hear the yellow call. Oh. Brady. Brady. Brady takes a shot. Chased down by. Shot. It's been a wild shot, I think. It was a little out of control. It was, it was moving, though. It, it was moving, it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it had some heat behind it. Brady with the bounce pass up off the chest. Number 40, Kettering. Another tough angle shot. I was number They're not five making it easy for themselves, odd. I don't think. They, they no. aren't. It seems like they're just taking shots because they know they need to get back in it. Yeah, but anything will help, really. Yeah, but they want to move it around and get really good shots. Kettering on a good drive. Kettering di dips oh, it over. Oh, he's dropped that. But he's dropped it. Him. There we go. Here's Benedict. Now. It's all Benedict. Benedict now fakes the pass. He's going to take a shot on his own. Oh, great save. Good save, though. Oh, second attempt as well. That was Pryor trying to go hand. off the back of the net. And here we go. He's going the other way. It's going to be a four on three fast break. Doesn't pass it over. Skips it down off the oh! post. Off the post. Go to the shot by number 33, Shilo. Oh, what a shot. That was a great, right that was a great skip skip pass. They faked it over to the point. We'll see Tong save. write a thank you note to the post later. Yeah. <laughs> and then Tong with a beautiful save. Yeah, the post can be your best friend some days. For sure. I just saw a strange interaction between number 25, Connor Boyle, and number five, um, Zachary Ott. I think Doyle's stick got stuck on on Ott's pants there. It looked like they were just walking with each other. Yeah, that can't be comfortable. That can't be, but it's all <laughs> figured out now because NC State is on offense. Oh, a little slippage there. Ball's picked up. Ball's being moved around. Ball's with the goalie. Good pass up the middle. Kind of stops him in stride, but he's still going. 
5.30 left, three goal lead for NC State. UCF. Momentum with UCF at the moment. But the clock is working against them. Yeah. They've got to get one in the back of the net UCF soon. UCF would like to get one soon, like you said, just to keep that confidence and that thought that they can come back. Move there by Ott. Brady with it, trying to go around goal. Great defense there by Baldbro. Pryor picks him up. The smaller man, Pryor, though, they give him that crease. And we've got man in the crease. Looks like Pryor. And it's gonna go black. I Looks couldn't like really see Pryor what happened. And Brady there. got tangled up. A, a bit, bit of a mess in there, right? <laughs> it was a bit. It was a big mess in there. I, like you were saying, Trevor, they did get tangled up, and Brady ended up on top of Pryor, which could not be comfortable for the smaller Pryor there. No, <laughs> not at all. Ball Ball's on the crease with Shiloh. Great check by Pryor. Lots Pryor, of there. Pryor, Pryor been has been stepping up. He really has. Pryor's been playing out of his mind today. Really good checks. Hinshaw Ooh, big hit. takes a lick. Number 22, Gaffney. Gaffney moves it to Shiloh. Shiloh to Brady. Brady nice puts it in the net. back of the net. He catches it down this time. Now it's eight to six with 4.30 left. There's in time. This. There is time. Yeah. I, th I definitely like the way they moved the ball there. Very quick movement. Um, didn't give up, even though they were being defended very tightly. Sort of outnumbered almost at times. Um, but still managing to get that shot away well and keeping it accurate. Gaffney did a great job coming back and getting that ball for his team. He m he was the one that got them that ball back. Bodying. I thought Gaff Gaffney passed it to Shiloh. I thought... Or Shilo. I thought Shilo was going to pull it. He did one more pass, got it to Brady, and Brady was able to reel it in and send it to the back of the net. And now we got timeouts. All right, Nathan, I'm going to ask you, what's going on inside of Coach Demarest's head of NC State? What is he telling his team? He's got to tell his team, focus, calm down, stop making mistakes, don't drop the ball, keep the ball, first off. There's just over four minutes left in this game. They can't give away any more goals. You know, maybe one goal would have been a little bit more insurance. Maybe go for that. But once you do, sit back. Don't mess up. You know, keep the ball. Maybe run the time down, run the clock down a bit more. Just don't let UCF have any chances, you know. And then, Trevor, on the flip side, you're you're the UCF coach. What are you telling your team to get? They've got the momentum. What are you telling them right now to make sure they keep their foot on the gas? Well, first and foremost, you want to get this face-off coming up. Just gain the possession there and then try to get another goal and make it a one-point game with three, four minutes to go. Absolutely, and we know both teams can strike quick. NC State scored two back-to-back -back quick, and then UCF, they've been playing at a fast pace, and they've just been having trouble reeling in passes. Brady had Brady had a bit of the drop bug, and it looks like he's got rid of that now, catch, reeling that last one in. And it looks like this is a brand new game, even though it is six, six to eight in favor of the Wolfpack. Looks yeah. like we've got a really good close game on our hands, and we also got Coach Demarest selling his team, wanting his team to not, to not let that lead slip like they did against Wake Forest, to make sure that they can play with a lead late, and make sure to keep holding on, and not allow them to score more, about five goals like Wake did. <laughs> last week or two weekends ago there's a face ball's come up balls down we got one ucf player and benedict comes up with a high check oh, to the head wow. and that's gonna be in favor of nc state bet even after that flag though they dropped the ball state dropped the ball and that was the first thing i said it was one of the first things i said if i was the coach that's why i say don't drop the ball and i've gone ahead and done it again like it's just it's those simple things you have to work on, and you've got to perfect. Benedict got checked in the head there, and he skipped his way off, knowing he drew a penalty for his team. And that's going to be a minute off. Let's say that they don't score here, and they just hold out the clock. UCF doesn't get a man, doesn't get six on six until 3:09 at the earliest or at the latest, and. That's really good for NC State here. You don't want any late penalties if you're 
this UCF team really hurting your chances of coming back. It's not like hockey where you can pull a goalie. You're playing with five mi five attack men, then maybe you have your goalie go play behind the goal at some point. But right now, NC State's on their man up. And they've had some success early, hasn't seen, honestly, no man ups a lot has happened a lot in the second half for NC State. No, there hasn't. Ball's up with oh Tobin. Man. Gets UCF player, takes it in the knee. There's a yard sale. And the ball got stuck in the stick of the, the NC State player. Now it's going to go UCF. That's number 42. Timothy Durst running around with it. Durst now moves it over to, moves it to Ott. Ott to 25, balls out with Shiloh. Shiloh's looking around and now we're even with three minutes left. And that's Brady, Brady now ropes it over, tries oh. a high shot, doesn't get it, but the re-attack. Got That'll Shiloh now, Shiloh moves it up to Ott. Ott, Good low save. shot, great save by Tong. Dropped it down in front of the crease. It's a wise Beautiful. play by a defender. A wise, beautiful save by Tong. Looks for the pass up to Tobin. Tobin's going to put on the Jets and run. He's got a man on his back. You hear the bench shouting, back, back, back. Another behind. Needs to release the ball. That's well here. Balls with Benedict in the long back. stick. You want to get Benedict off yeah, the smacked field smacked all around soon. there. Get the ball out of his hands. Yeah, you want not, to. nothing. Yeah, nothing against Benedict's ball handling, but he's got more area to hit to get that ball out than any of these short sticks. That ball's down low. We got two four. 2.13 now. And you got to think they're about to go black here, which means block off everyone, no adjacents, and have the goalie just go. One. And here we go. We got block. We have the black, so they're going to play very aggressive. Now it's going to be one on one, basically. Go in. And we're going to have a flag for a slash. <laughs> Tan's not so happy. I kind of agree with him. I don't I, think you call that one. Yeah, that's an interesting call this late in the game, yeah. especially a contact sport like this where you're allowed to check like that. Yeah, absolutely. He wasn't getting him up on the arm. It was pretty close to his hand. Yeah, it was very close so to his hands, yeah. Uh, and you could hear from up here, you could hear the sound of it hitting. It sounded stick like it was hitting stick, stick on glow. stick. Yeah, yeah. stick, yeah. It was a, so. Now it's 138. Man's definitely not happy. <laughs> no, he might be picking that up on the mics, but what can happen too is UCF still has the possibility to score man down. They're going to play still aggressive because yeah, what's the point to. of losing by three by two if you, there's no reason you not to lose by closer, three? Yeah. yeah, there's no shame in losing by three. UCF's got to go here and try to pull the goalie out and even it up and leave the net open and get the ball mm -hmm. back with just a minute They're start left. doubling soon. So they're at a really tough spot though with that man down. Out, yeah. There you go, good defense run right into help. help out, oh, good check there by 10 and ball's gonna stay, NC State. 103. Ball's moved over to Ivy. Ivy now, you gotta think you want it in the hands of Tobin. And it looks like Ivy there. got hit in the crotch. And a flag comes from the left. Oh. And UCF is now playing very aggressive. They're going to yep. slide hard sort now. Of they, dangerous. Every time the ball's getting tossed off this. Flag. There's another flag. Late yeah. There's three flags on the field on UCF. Right yeah. The game's now starting to get dangerous if you you have a white yeah, helmet referee's, on. Referee's got to calm the game down. You know, yeah. there is 45 seconds left on the clock. I'm going to make a bold call and say this one's all but over right now. Yeah. So. Well, that is yeah. very bold. Stuff. I can agree with you on that <laughs> one. I think I think this is pretty much done for. And we've got two handkerchiefs down on the ground. Three. Three. Lots of laundry. Yeah. On Lots field. of laundry. There was a couple of late hits, I think, especially off the ball was played. I agree. I agree with you. I think we're going to be playing with three men for – UCF, it's a very chippy at the end here. Kind of looks like the end of the first half. NC State is up 8-6 with 45 seconds left. And it's going to be three on six. Yeah, if they don't score here, it won't be too bad. I think maybe if they just keep possession, run the clock down. Mm -hmm. But Coach I think for NC State, go ahead and get a goal. You know? yeah, yeah, I think NC State, they're going to want to get a goal here. Chop the head off the snake right here. 
Balls up in the middle. I wouldn't Balls be surprised to see him hold it though. Yeah. yeah. Just keeping that possession. Run Balls the over down, with I Ivy. Said. Play a bit more conservative. Although now it's going to be four, four on six. Got the extra man in. Yeah, they're doing just what I said they're going to do. Just kind of slow the game down. No, no, there's really no, no, no reason need, not to. Yeah. No they don't have to, to stay close. in. You got the rotation going. Got the goalie rotating as well. We got a five-man rotation going as they're stretching out the field. 15 now, seconds left. Now double release. Now we're at sixes. Have walls cutting. No one sees him. He's running right into the goalie. Goalie's playing. The ball's going to go out. And the clock Time is about to run out. 2.8 seconds. No, yeah. it's going now. And that's the end of the game. NC State brings it home. 8-6. Bring their record to 4 Four and two, undefeated at home still with three wins. And then UCF on the flip, they fall 0 and 2 to start their season. And NC State played a really good game. Yeah, and can you yeah. see the state players run over to Tong there, their goalkeeper, and just congratulated him. I think he played quite well, kept the minute a few times. Yeah, he really stepped up in the second half, and UCF had a lot of goals, shots on goal in that second half, and he shut them down. And the 8 6 in favor of NC State. And we'll be right back. Hi, and welcome back down for our final shot of NC State lacrosse. 8-6 victory over UCF. And Nathan, what did you see out of this game? I saw a lot, you know. Uh, being one of my first couple experiences with lacrosse, this has been you know, phenomenal for me. Um, the weather, obviously, not that great. Cold, I didn't enjoy that part. But having said that, though, great display. Um, I definitely enjoyed Chris Tong at the end of the game, near the end of the game. He definitely stepped up his game today. And then, Trevor, you've been around lacrosse for a while. What did you see as the game started and ended? What did you see out of this pack team? Um, as far as the NC State team itself, they started out really fast, came out with seven goals, I believe, in the first half. Um, they only put up one in the second half, but they really clamped down on defense and shut UCF down for the most part and made it really tough for them to get back in the game, and they ended up winning it. Absolutely, and on the face-off X, we had NC State really put in a good performance for the first time in a while, and how, how do they improve on that, Nathan? How do they make sure that they go from good performances sporadically to good performances consistently? I would just say keep practicing, keep working hard, you know, get, don't give up because the more work you put into it, the more um, the, the benefits going to come from it and you can only think positively, you know. And then, Trevor, we had NC State defensively. They came up strong in the end. Mm -hmm. Where, can, how does that make Coach Demarest feel knowing that he's got a really good defensive unit? They could put in whoever you wanted. He could put in Nathan here in goal. How does that make him feel? <laughs> um, I mean, having a good defense is, is essential, obviously. And um, having a good defense helps you get in transition quickly, helps you get e those easy goals that way. And it also helps your offense just get started a little bit smoother than having to worry about stopping teams. Right? <laughs> and bringing a cold game to a close, NC State wins 8-6 for Nathan White Ingram. And Trevor Seaman, I am Sam Harding. We are signing off. Welcome down to Lower Method Field. We have a beautiful matchup for you today. We have 0-1 one oh UCF Golden Knights taking on our 3-2 two and, three and two Wolfpack team. I am Sam Harding. Alongside me to my left is Nathan White Ingram. Nathan, how are you feeling today? Um, rather smashing, apart from this weather, though. It is a bit cold. The rain has been on and off, spitting. Kind of dangerous, you know, making the field a little bit slippy. For one, my toes are cold. My hands are cold. I've got gloves on. Hopefully we'll stay warm inside our tent. Not sure how the weather is going to affect the game, though. And to my right is Trevor Seaman. Trevor, playing at you played at Apex High School. You played MIDI. What is this weather going to do for you as a player? As a player, this weather it's just going to make your hands cold. It's going to make the ground cold, 
and hard. It's going to affect the checking and how the ball runs and bounces. So it's going to make it interesting. Absolutely. We saw some of the UCF players, they have little surgical gloves under their hands to put their gloves over to make sure that they're warm. And we talked about the ball bouncing. We have two goalies coming in. We have Christopher Cacciatore for UCF and Christopher Tong. And we have Tong starting his second game, his first at home. And Nathan, what's that going to do for the young goalie's mental? I think it'll be a confidence boost for him. Um, you know, second game, it's going to be tough. This team, not sure how they're going to perform. This weather conditions, a little bit different, especially for a goalkeeper. Um, hopefully he'll have the most confidence he can, you know, play as best he can, the best he can, and his team will be behind him for sure. Absolutely, and we have UCF coming from Liberty University, and they had a tough loss. Now, how do they want to bounce back here, Trevor? Um, after a loss, you just want to come out and play hard. You want to uh, come out and be the aggressor, and you don't want to let the other team go get up on you and try to be coming back again. Absolutely, and <coughs> NC State, they're coming off a road trip last weekend. They had three games in two days. Now, how did that road trip go for them, Nathan? Well, they came back with a couple injuries, and of course, you know, whenever a teammate is injured, that's not going to be a positive outcome. So we'll wonder, I'd like to see how those injuries will affect the whole team chemistry and um, perhaps moving forward as well. Yeah, we got some new players coming in. We had Andrew Matherly, number 11, go down with a grade two hamstring. And in the last home game against, against Wake Forest, we had Kyle Baker, number two, get taken out at the last play of the game with a grade two concussion. So we have some injuries. And Trevor, you've played through some injuries. What's that like not knowing that you're at 100% and not wanting to re-aggravate that injury? Um, I mean, the most important thing is to definitely come back and try to get back. Don't come back early and try to come back 100%. And then so you just kind of trust in yourself and trust in your abilities at that point. Absolutely. And you hear the whistles going. That means game is about to start. We're about two minutes out. We'll come back for first face-off in a few.